cable-operated backhoes, shovels, and drag lines could be seen on almost every construction job before the 1940s. Then began the era of hydraulics. Milwaukee Hydraulics Company, President Roy Billings, saw an opportunity to use hydraulics to build a safer crane. By 1946, Milwaukee Hydraulics had developed America's first hydraulic crane. Hi, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and I'm here with another episode of Toy Talk. Today's episode is about another great Toy Farmer and Toy Trucker and Contractor magazine release. Smash the like button for this highly detailed Northwest Engineering Company Model 25D Crane Dragline by Speccast for the 2009 National Toy Truck and Construction Show. Milwaukee Hydraulics Corporation developed America's first hydraulic crane in 1946. Prior to that, cranes, drag lines, back and face shovels were operated mechanically using friction cables and pulleys. Even the steam face shovel that Bruce Iris Erie built to dig the Panama Canal was a cable operated machine. Go on and see my video about Versailles Erie and the Panama Canal after this video ends with the link. Steam power and gas or diesel engines were used to power these machines. But I digress from today's subject. Northwest Engineering Company was founded in 1917 by the Hartman Greeling Company of Chicago, Illinois. Hartman Greeling started manufacturing cranes in 1920. Northwest led the way in crane development and manufacture in cranes until 1983. T-Rex Corporation acquired Northwest in 1983 and operated Northwest until closing Northwest a few years later in 1990. Steam power was being replaced by gas and diesel power plants. To compete with the other crane manufacturers, Northwest Engineering Company built its first gas and diesel excavator in 1921 at its plant in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Soon, Northwest became the second largest manufacturer of excavators in the U.S. Tough, durable, and reliable became Northwest's reputation. Annual production numbers increased until 1955 when over 1,000 cable excavators left the Green Bay factory in that year. Remember at the beginning, I mentioned Milwaukee Hydraulics had developed America's first hydraulic crane in 1946. Yet Northwest continued to manufacture cable friction operated cranes into the 1950s. Annual production numbers increased until 1955 when over 1,000 cable excavators left the Green Bay factory in that year. However, <laughs> failure to keep up with the competition eventually caused Northwest to sell out to T-Rex and finally closed down in 1990. Hydraulics, they made cranes safer and stronger. Hydraulic excavators took over and replaced the cable friction operated machines. Hydraulic pistons are used extensively to provide muscle power to make back and face shovels work much more efficiently. Cables and pulleys are still used in the operation of cranes and drag lines. Diesel and gas motors are still used to provide power, but they run hydraulic motors which in turn power the drums that run the cables that are attached to the cranes and drag lines. Now, I'm gonna hop on over to the quarry to talk about the model. After that, some more info on Toy Trucker and the Northwest Model 25D. And here we go, guys. This is the Northwest Engineering Model 25D crawler crane that's set up as a drag line. 
It has the lattice boom and the three-quarter yard bucket for the drag line hanging on it. This was a very, very common sight on construction sites back in the day. It's a cable friction operated machine, not hydraulics. It uses cables and friction drums in order to move everything on board. Really cool back in the day. This particular model was made for the National Toy Truck and Construction Show in 2009. The model was made by Speccast. It's all die cast metal, including the tracks, and the tracks roll pretty good for being die cast metal in 150th scale. You don't really see working tracks that are great. Even in bigger scales, it's hard to make them roll. But Speccast did a pretty good job. The rollers do good, and the track links are really pretty good. It runs through this really cool cable system and up here. It has all of those cable drums right there that would raise and lower the boom, pull the bucket in and everything else. Pulleys up here also roll so you can see it. And then there is the three quarter yard drag line style bucket. See, it's just got uh, teeth on the front. It hits the ground and then it just scoops towards the machine as this cable pulls it in. These here were really, really efficient machines and they did tons and tons of work and drag lines are still being made today. The Northwest cab here, it has, I'll show it, it has a window that's hard plastic on the side of the door. The door does open. It has interior controls. Really hard to see in there, but there's the two main levers to run the bucket. There's a seat, maybe we can see it through the window. There's a seat there and then other levers that run it. These trip machines took a lot of coordination to run because you had to mow multiple levers in order to operate the booms and the buckets. They wouldn't just grab one lever did it all. They had to use all of it. The door closes and it's a really, really nice piece. Back here you can see engine radiator grills for the big diesel or gasoline engine, depending on which engine the guys ordered, exhaust and other stuff right up on top. Underneath, you can see the bottom of the tracks and the really cool tread pattern that they've got on the tracks. Really, really nice. A little bit of dust. This is, after all, an old, old model. There's the mechanism that would make everything run and then you can see they do pivot all the way around. They have a chain drive and sprocket, which drives each track individually. That was the way they ran them back in the day. Didn't use hydraulics because hydraulics came in a little bit after this model was introduced, but they keep, kept making this model long after hydraulics kind of took over. Back here, you can see the big Northwest Engineering Company, Chicago, Illinois, manufactured at Green Bay, Wisconsin. Northwest was based in Chicago, but it had its manufacturing facility there in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and that's where these machines were made. You can see doors here that don't open so that you could access machinery and work on it. Also, big nice uh, stripe pattern to show, to let people know that be a careful of this area. This machine does swing and it would hurt you pretty bad if you got hit there. Back over to this side, and you can see it has a door that opens. Really hard to open that door, it wants to stick, and the slots are pretty small to slide something in, but I got a screwdriver here and we can open it up. Here, you can use the key, and you can access and turn the actual cable drum. There's a little shaft that it hooks onto, and that would raise and lower the bucket. Back there is the big gas or the diesel engine probably the big diesel engine that powers this machine and puts power to all the cables and the pulleys to make sure this thing works as i said no hydraulics on this machine it was all cable and chain operated it's 100 mechanical machine no hydraulics you can see it just swivels right around on that base really really nice and that is the northwest engineering Model 25D cable friction operated crawler crane with a drag line bucket set up on it. It's got a three quarter yard bucket. It's made by Speccast for the 2009 National Toy Truck and Construction Show model.
the toy trucker strives to make the finest scale models of construction equipment, like this Northwest drag line, and the Bersiris Erie model of the steam shovel used to dig the Panama Canal. That Bersiris Erie shovel was one of the best scale models they have made. The Northwest engineering model lives up to the high standards that toy truckers set for their scale model replicas. The Specast model is a model of the Northwest Engineering Model 25D crane set up as a drag line. The Northwest Model 25D was a standard three quarter yard cable drag line excavator and it could operate as a full shovel, face shovel, drag line, clamshell, or crane. The Model 25D featured changeable front parts, much like the Bobcats of today. Please see my video about Bobcat skid loaders. By changing the front end attachments, the Model 25D was a versatile machine on a contractor's roster of equipment. The National Toy Truck and Construction Show model is set up as a drag line. As you know, drag lines are useful in dredging and mining operations. Speccast also released a face shovel, pole shovel, and crane versions of the Northwest Model 25D for you to find. I've got a free checklist of all the versions of the Northwest Engineering Model 25D that Speccast made. Grab it with the link down below. Also, to really help out our hobby, please go and subscribe to the Toy Trucker and Contractor Magazine with another link down below. Please smash that like button, drop your comments, and subscribe to my channel. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon.